Hello, everybody. I'm so glad that you are joining us for Up and to the Right. And I, last week was just absolutely wonderful. I got to sit down uh, leading into the Easter weekend with none other than Pastor Hetty Coleman at our Guthrie location. Had a wonderful conversation with him. And today, uh, our location pastor, Samson Varghese in Oklahoma City. Samson, it is great to be able to just have a conversation with you today. Absolutely. I'm excited. Well, what a great weekend we had. We did. We had a fantastic Easter weekend uh, at all locations in Oklahoma City. We had an incredible, incredible time. And so we're still kind of living off the glow a little bit. You know, like when Moses came down the mountain, he was still glowing. I feel like we're all, our whole staff is glowing. We had the longest uh, cake session this morning as a team, just celebrating our team. And so it was awesome. We sure did. We sure did. So if somebody's listening, I think they've, uh, if they follow this podcast quite often, they've heard about cake before, but it's been a while. Uh, t- tell us a little bit about what, what cake is. Yeah. So uh, cake is whenever we give shout outs uh, and celebrations of our team members. And so uh, we do it for volunteers uh, that are not in the room. We do it for staff that are in the room. And so someone will be like, hey, I want to give cake. And then everybody will scream like, cake, 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 cake. Um, and then that person will be like, I want to give pig- cake to Pastor Rodney. <laughs> and so uh, and then they'll say why, you know, and then everyone will cheer and celebrate. And so it's just a great way for our team to coming off of a, a busy weekend just to remember why we're doing what we're doing. Um, it's it's incredible. It's special. It's one yeah, of my favorite. I, I, I absolutely love it. Matter of fact, it, it was probably about a month and a half ago. We had uh, some guests in some things that we had to accomplish business wise for our staff meeting. And uh, I think um, uh, Pastor Clinton and I had planned on probably not having cake that day. When I found out they weren't having cake that day, I said, hey, just give us just give us three minutes of time or four minutes of time of cake because it does me good uh, to yep. hear our team members celebrate other team members and volunteers uh, that just do such a wonderful job to make things go at North Church uh, for all of yep. the locations. So it just does it does me good. But of course, like today, especially coming off of um, Easter weekend, there was tons of cake uh, being given out to lots of people. And it was absolutely wonderful. Yeah. I think we went for like an hour, like staff meeting was long today, <laughs> and it was just all cake. So it was great. Now, and, and some people might not un- understand exactly, you know, you, 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 you cannot fully appreciate it unless you actually are in the room experiencing yeah. it. Uh, yeah. and anybody I've had other, you know, pastors, when we have our overseers in that pastor, great churches come in, uh, business leaders come in, anybody that comes from the outside and experience that every single time they always tell me that was great. Yep. And I think it's one of those things that is part of the culture of our staff now. I've been doing this for several years. And, of course, it was Pastor Hetty that introduced it to us. And uh, it's been just a wonderful thing. Yeah, it's a culture setter for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you, you mentioned uh, this weekend. Uh, obviously, it's great for the whole church around the world uh, what happened. I heard great reports from other pastors. But, you know, as far as North Church, just a great time. Uh, just oh. a lot of lives that... Uh, Obviously, you got your numbers, which really are going to be about two to almost three times, uh, almost three times what we normally have just from people that show up. Um, People could be far from God, people who, you know, de-churched or people who call North Church home but don't regularly attend. They kind of all show up that day. And it's just a very powerful time. And then, of course, the experiences. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just hearing reports from our locations and I know where I was in Oklahoma City on the stage that it was just a powerful, powerful experience. Um, oh, it was. At least I incredible. felt that. Yeah, it was incredible. I mean, so many people like if you were out uh, in the like while the sermon was going on, if you're out in the lobby and you're just kind of peeking in, you you could see people like as they're leaving the auditorium. Right. Like they are wiping tears away like. Uh, people at the altar. I, I was talking to uh, one of our prayer team volunteers just actually this morning, and they were talking about how it was incredible, uh, the people that came to the altar. Um, and so just the response of people, it was like the Holy Spirit was moving. God God was at work because you don't have a move like that. And it's just, we, of course, we do all that we do in preparation to that, but there's, we don't get to do the hard stuff. That The hard stuff is all the Holy Spirit. And so yeah. it was God. No, that's a good way to put it, uh, Samson. Yeah. That is true. When it really boils down to it, 
or the rubber meets the road, it's really the work of the Holy Spirit in individual hearts and lives. Yeah. And so and we tell you, Pastor, one of my favorite things was actually uh, last Tuesday, we had prayer meeting um, and I was encouraging our team, our volunteers, you know, our, our staff, our volunteers that put on Easter weekend, all the production, all that kind of stuff. They put in a ton of hours and they're all volunteers. They're not paid staff. They're volunteers that do this. Um, and I just encourage them. Um, hey, if you can come to prayer meeting, I know you're putting you're here a lot of the nights of the week this week getting ready for Easter. But if you can come to prayer meeting um, and, you know, we I don't know how many people came forward to put a name. Uh, we had Angie went up there during prayer meeting and said, hey, put up whoever you want to pray for. We'll commit to praying for them for like a month. Um, and so just write a name down. And so uh, I just saw so many people coming forward. I actually went forward. Uh, somebody, one of my my son's friends from church, uh, from school, um, and who you know doesn't go to church. He's not a believer. Uh, his family's not Christian. Uh, they're actually Hindu. Um, and he wanted to write down his friend's name uh, as one of the names. And so uh, we got to walk up and put that name down uh, at the altar and pray over the name at the altar. And uh, it might sound silly to some people. Uh, I'm tearing up, uh, tearing up as I think of it. It might sound silly to some people, but it's not. It's it's incredible. There were people like that bringing their son's names, their children's names up to the altar. And uh, people, people got saved this weekend and came to know Jesus. And that's somebody's son. Somebody was praying like that for that person. Um, and that prayer meeting... If you don't show up to prayer meeting, you just got to come to a prayer meeting one time because, man, that's that's the heart of what we do. And so it was incredible. That was one of my favorite things in preparation for Easter weekend. So No, I, I agree with you. And I, I know I, I took up actually eight names I wrote down on that card for me to turn. Yeah. I think that they said that there was um, almost 160 or so names that were turned in thereabout uh, for prayer just right there on the spot. And yeah. just a... And, and I believe that there was many of those that showed up for church, seeds were planted, lives were changed because of the prayers, because yeah. prayer is uh, the key to what everything we do is yes. literally when we're doing, we're, we're calling out to God in prayer. We're saying, God, <laughs> you see our efforts and you see our time and you see our energy and you see us, but God, we can't do this without you. That's what yeah. praying is. It's Absolutely. saying, God, we have to have you to change yeah. hearts and lives. Yeah. You have to be the one that removes the veil. Uh, this yeah. weekend, we're talking about the veil being torn in two. And one of those verses toward the end is like the veil off of our individual hearts, lives, minds uh, has yeah. to be removed. And that's the work of God, not yeah. the work of men. Absolutely. And praise report, his friend showed up to church on Saturday. So, <sighs> yeah. Her words. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah. Those seeds are planted. Yeah. God's word does not return void. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, you talk a little bit this weekend, you mentioned the production team, obviously uh, tell everybody exactly what your role, you're one of the executive pastors, uh, overall, you know, all of North church. Uh, the other one is pastor Clint and yeah. pastor Clint, his functioning role is, um, operations pastor, but that includes, um, uh, everything from facilities to finance to, um, groups to host team yeah. and, and there's a lot of other things he's over kind of the our location pastors too and but uh, and we all wear multiple hats we're not just locked into our job description but tell yeah. us a little bit about what you do uh yeah. your role as an executive pastor yeah so my role really has to do with uh, the experiences so weekend experiences uh kids ministry student ministry um and so I get the privilege to help oversee, guide uh, all of those areas, and particularly with the weekend experiences, uh, it's getting our our team ready uh, and all of the creative elements uh, that goes into that. Uh, we have a great team, so I can't lay claim to like this is all my stuff. Like they, we have a fantastic team that does uh, where the rubber meets the road and gets all that together. Um, I certainly have a, a hand in helping guide some of those conversations. Uh, and getting the right people uh, on on board, so we're heading the right direction. So, and and I see my role really as executing your vision. And so, um, I, I do feel like the Holy Spirit speaks to you, Pastor Rodney, and, and guidance those big vision items for our church. And so, a big piece of my role is to say, how do we execute that, and how do we have the right people 
on the right seats on our bus. So we're headed in the right direction. Yeah. I want everybody to understand that's listening right now. When they say execute my vision, uh, when it comes into the weekend, it's not that uh, I'm saying, hey, here's what I want. Go do this. <laughs> it's, really, yeah. it's really the issue of they, uh, your team, you and the team uh, understand my heart, uh, the ultimate vision of what we have as a church. I remember oftentimes, y'all, over the years, you've asked me, you've stopped asking me the question so much, like, hey, what are you going to be, you know, really diving into over Easter and then the production fitting around that? And I, I begin to tell y'all over the time, hey, you guys, you know what we got to accomplish that weekend. It's about lifting up Jesus, his resurrection, um, you know, what happened on the cross of Calvary there. And, and, and then you guys begin to put together the pieces of that, what it could be. And then y'all begin to bring to me. And then I begin to shape the message around, you know, what you guys put together. And, yeah. um, and then this year was none less than just absolutely amazing. Every part yeah. from the time, um, you know, we started with Sawyer and Amy on stage, kind of uh, leading into uh, service time all the way up until the experience started all the way to the end was just absolutely powerful. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If I can give you guys just a sneak peek into kind of how we process this, you know, one of the things that we did at the beginning of this year, every time we have a big weekend, Easter, Christmas, that kind of thing, uh, we start off uh, with um, with a, kind of a creative session, brainstorming session as a creative team. Uh, and we start throwing out every idea. Uh, so we're not limiting ourselves on budget. We're not limiting ourselves on, oh, is that going to be too hard? Is it going to require too many people? We're not right now. We're just saying, hey, we're going to brainstorm everything. Everything's going to be thrown on a whiteboard. All the ideas, everybody gets a sticky note. We throw sticky, sticky notes on the wall. Um, and uh, Pastor Farah, uh, our, she's, her title is worship pastor, but uh, she has a huge hand in leading our creative production team. Um, and she helps navigate that for us. And so she helps guide those conversations. Um, and then what we hope to do from that is put together, we call it a slide deck uh, or a presentation, you know, uh, and we bring that to, to you, Pastor Rodney, and uh, we'll present what we think Easter is going to look like. Um, and so some of those crazy ideas that we have about, hey, we want to bring in this big sheet, you know, like this big scrim and put it up on, and then have it drop at this time. And uh, we want to have the the video be like this or do this creative element or tell this story. Um, and we present that to you. And it's done in a very professional way. It's just like any other creative studio um, would do it. Uh, so we present, we pitch in a very professional way. We have team members come in, uh, think of it like a very small, you know, like when Apple makes an announcement, <laughs> it's kind of like, it's kind of like that kind of a presentation. And we, uh, our team comes in, they, they do their presentation. And, um, that's where, uh, I think credit to you, Pastor Rod, you have a great way of asking really good questions so that some of the stuff that we, we need to be thinking deeper about, or even just like, Oh, what if we tweak this? What if we do that? Um, really helps kind of guide from there the direction we go. And so um, that really sets the the direction, the vision of what Easter is going to look like. So, you know, Easter, you might think you just kind of poof, it just happened. But really, you know, those elements were being worked on from the beginning of 2024. Uh, some, some of those elements, conversations were happening at the end of 2023. Um, and so there's a lot of, a lot of things that go into that. Yeah, well, the first conversation I had with you guys, well, I actually went back into the fall uh, yeah. in regards to kind of the preparation. Of course, when the calendar year turns over, then it's like, oh, you hit the ground running, especially this year because yeah. Easter was earlier on the calendar than it normally is. And so, uh, which people wonder, like, why is that? And people say, why does yeah. Easter change every year? Uh, yeah. Do you know why, Samson? Can you explain that a little bit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it follows like the uh, it, well it follows Passover, and Passover follows like the is it the lunar calendar? Absolutely. I was yeah, thinking, I'm gonna yeah. check out this guy with the you know hey man you you've you've got a you know uh, a seminary degree or a cemetery degree <laughs> whatever you call it, and uh, you you've got yeah. so you've got a lot of education under your belt and that's literally what it is. Uh, there's a whole lot more to it than just you know, but it is about the lunar calendar. Uh, that falls yeah. in line with Passover uh, yeah. and the Jewish, you know, history, historical event of the uh, people being led out of Egypt's bondage yeah. many, many years ago. So, 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. so you, I think you, actually you credit to YouTube. I learned that one on YouTube, Pastor. I didn't learn that one in seminary. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, you, you you talk about all that went into, and I'm just I'm impressed with the the excellence with which uh, you know you guys deliver uh, each and every time, and I just uh, I'm moved um, by the sheer number of uh, hours, prayers, um, intentionality, uh, editing, uh, that is not simple. And I, yeah. and I don't know, maybe you can give us an idea of what, how many hours this takes to be able to do some of these things. Yeah. It's a lot. I, I don't, it might be intimidating to count up all those hours. I have no idea, uh, hours wise, but I will tell you, uh, the last week leading up to Easter, our team was here, uh, every, pretty much every night of the week, uh, leading up. And so some of them up to 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night. Now here's the thing. Uh, there's been years past. The reason we were here that late is because we were not well prepared, <laughs> but, uh, the last many years, uh, I think, uh, we've, the reason we're here is because we're just passionate and we want it to go so well. And so, and it's like tweaks and changes and things like that. And so, uh, we, you know, we went into this thing and we had an idea of what we wanted to do uh, and what I think I put in our heart to do. Um, and so when you, when you have like, this is like, this is going to be really good. It's like those hours come easier, you know, uh, those that the extra time comes naturally because you're this is the thing you've been. I always say, what's the thing that keeps you up at night? Right. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing you're passionate about. And so every, like every single person on this team, like this is what kept them up at night. They wanted to make this so special. So I'll, I'll give you an example. So uh, the mercy video. So we, we just internally call it the mercy video. It's, it's the song was called mercy. Uh, it's a Maverick city song uh, from 2023, 2022. Uh, and that was kind of our, our song right before you came up for the sermon. It's the one with the, 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 the story the, of Lexington and Mabel Bassett, the prisons. Uh, uh, and we talked about, Hey, the North church is a church of, you know, of six locations and two of those locations are behind prison bars. Um, and so this was the first time really we we're showing that um, and how it came about was actually a young lady on our team. Her name is Michelle Tartabono. Uh, Michelle had this idea of, Hey, we, what if we were to go in and capture Baptist? We like amazing things were happening behind bars uh, ever since Lexington and Mabel Bassett, we started those churches. And so, uh, we've been hearing about people getting saved and baptized, and we're like, how do we get in there? But I don't know if you know this, but it's really hard to take a camera into a prison. <laughs> Not just a camera, a camera crew of yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. Yes. With microphones, yeah. with cases, and well, yeah, 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 it's not not easy. Uh, apparently, you can't walk in with your iPhone into the prison, so <laughs> that's it made it really hard. And so she was like, hey, what if we went in and we captured their, they, we knew they were having a baptism service because people were getting saved and they had a number of people that wanted to be baptized. And so she was like, what if we went in and got, you know, captured them getting baptized and shit. And that's what it was. That's all it was. Not even for Easter, just to share it. Because we show every week, you know, we show people getting baptized who've gotten baptized and we show those videos in our services and our experiences. And I was like, Michelle, like, I think that's a great idea, but in the past, when we tried to take a camera crew, it was like all sorts of red tape. And, you know, I mean, rightfully so. They The prison system wants to protect and all that kind of stuff. And but I said, hey, if you want to chase this thing, go after it. And so she had the conversation with anybody and everybody that would listen to her. Uh, she reached out to Pastor Karen and Pastor Karen was all on board. And, you know, we had to kind of push for this uh, because this is different. And whenever you're doing something different. Um, you know, you have to go through some hoops. And so uh, we got permission uh, and we had to like list out everything we're taking in, all this kind of stuff. And we had to schedule it on the day that uh, we, so we actually did that at Mabel Bassett and we did it at, uh, at uh, Lexington. And I will tell you, when you walk into the church, North Church at Mabel Bassett, when you walk into North Church at, uh, at Lexington, you are walking into North Church. Yeah, there, it is not any less church there than it is out here. Um, these people, uh, these men and women, are on fire for God. They are living out their faith. Like when we went to Lexington, okay, there was a uh, uh, a gentleman there who was getting baptized, and the reason he got baptized 
was because it initially started because uh, there was a an outreach program that our church there was doing. This is these guys are thinking of their own outreach programs. Like I'm like, how do you do outreach inside of a prison? Well, like prisoners need little material, like you know, sh- shower shoes and things like that. And so our folks started a ministry uh, of whenever somebody needs something, they can come and ask the church and they will help them get if they need shower shoes or whatever items, whatever. And so that's how this one of the gentlemen started coming to North Church because he needed shower shoes. And then he ended up coming and he ended up liking it and he ended up getting saved um, and wanted to get baptized. And so uh, there was a, there's another ministry they started where they would go into the, the hospital inside the prison and they would uh, just share the gospel and pray over people like they would be like chaplains praying over people inside the hospital, inside the prison. Um, and one of those gentlemen who he was actually in the video, uh, he, he had his legs were amputated from uh, the, the knees down. Um, and so four men had to pick him up. Uh, a very large man had to pick him up and put him into the tank. It was like, you know, that Bible story where they like put, bring their friend down the roof. Yeah. It was yeah. like that in real life. Yeah. Right. That's what we were seeing. Oh. Um and then when we went there, I kid you not, there was 20 guys out, like people just lining up outside. The back doors were open because there, every seat was filled. Uh, so when I say when we walk into mm-hmm. North Church Lexington, it is North Church. They are doing ministry. Just they, they end their services with love God, love people, follow Jesus. It is the real thing. And so uh, we went in, we did the baptism, um, and then... Uh, they actually got to see the video for Mercy uh, uh, yesterday, Easter Sunday. So they watched the service after we did because their service is later into Sunday night. And I texted Pastor Karen. This is what she texted. You want to hear what she said? Absolutely. Uh, she said, uh, there was a lot of shouting and praising the Lord. It was a full house, approximately 25 people standing outside to watch. So that's not including the people in the room. Tears, same with Mabel Bassett. They they watched it on Monday. Um, and this is what she said. At, at Lexington, there was 105 people there. And she says that would mean one out of every six prisoners on the yard was at North Church Lexington. Wow. That's great. I'm just blown away, right? Um, and so and that video, like just all the work that went into that, uh, the life change that we got to capture in that moment, uh, our team members editing, re-editing, because um, it, it is uh, incalculable, like what went into you, that. You, you, you're talking about the hours, and of course, I, I know you wouldn't be able to just throw out hours, but it's literally the thousands of hours. Yes. Uh, if, you, if you multiply all of our team members that in preparation for um, – the experience that's just on the production side of things, much less all the other, uh, you know, parts, the moving parts of a weekend like that. But, you know, when I was there Monday night for the uh, run through um, mm-hmm. leading up to Easter, oh, it's just powerful. I was sitting out at 10 o'clock with just a ton of people gathered all around and just, you know, you gave me just a moment just to speak into them. And it was just so powerful and moving for me to be able to look around the room and know that all of these individuals, except for just a handful of those that are on church staff, uh, everybody else is going to go to a full-time job tomorrow. They're going to be working all day. They put in lots of hours, but yet they're there on a Monday night at 10 o'clock, knowing that they're going to be there pretty much every night during the week, uh, preparing so that people can come to know Christ and that others will be encouraged and built up in their faith. And so yeah. it is just moving. It moves me every time, moves my heart. And literally, I, yeah. I break down and cry. <laughs> Some of the guys this morning, I walked into one of the uh, small groups and they said, they're talking about men who cry. They said, the yeah. Pastor cries. I said, I, I, I do. I cry. I'm a, I'm a crier. Uh, yeah. I can't be mean. Oh, I, 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 Pastor, can I ask you a question? Okay. So, uh, on when you spoke that Monday night, uh, you shared from Deuteronomy, which is what we're reading from. Uh, but you shared uh, it was a verse, and it was heart and soul. You said, "Do this with all your heart, all your soul." Can I ask kind of where that came from? 
uh, because I felt like after you said that, I was reading through Deuteronomy. Every time it was like every other chapter was heart and soul, heart and soul, heart and soul. And it was like kind of like our what we kept as a team just being reminded of heart and soul, everything we're doing, heart and soul. Where did that come from? Well, it came from the Bible. <laughs> uh, but, but but for but for me, you know, there's sometimes you I've given my life to reading the word. I can't tell you how many times I've read through the Bible now over the years. And uh, this year I've committed to uh, going through the Bible three times yeah. and uh, I mean, from cover to cover three times. And I haven't done that in several years where I've done it multiple times, but I've committed this year uh, to do that. And um, it just, something jumps out at to me different. Like every time I read through their stuff and heart and soul was one of those that jumped out at me this yeah. year. Uh, yeah. And probably it's not that I haven't noticed it in the past, but this year when I was reading it, uh, especially toward the end of uh, Deuteronomy, it's just yeah. mentioned again and again. And yeah. it really resonated with me. Uh, and it really spoke to when, you know, Jesus said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, yeah. all your heart, all yeah. your soul, and then yeah. your mind and your strength. But man, all of you, Jesus leads with heart and soul. Yeah. Deuteronomy was leading with saying heart and soul. You got to keep these commands. You got to do them and execute on these things. Heart and soul, heart and soul. I don't want to check a box. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to just uh, be, you know, religious and come in and just say, oh, I did my job. Man, that is so, uh, it, 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 it's not life giving. Yeah. But when something's done heart and soul, it's just filled with joy. It's filled with excitement. It's filled with uh, meaning. It's filled with a sense of purpose. It's filled yeah. with stuff that really matters in life. Yeah. I don't want, uh, and out of that, if we do that heart and soul, live God's word, uh, worship, preach that way, everything, then I think it just spills over into our relationships with people too. Yeah. Um, and it's what it should be. Our vertical yeah. relationship with God and then your horizontal relationship with man. And yeah. And then it spills over into your marriage and you'll be able to be heart and soul in your marriage with your children, yeah. uh, with your staff that you work with, your peers and people over you, under you. And, you know, I, I don't want to just go through the motion spiritually. I don't want to have a form of godliness and denying yeah. the power thereof that transforms us into the image of Christ. Yeah. And that can only happen when we truly give heart and soul to everything we do. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I did share that with the team and I appreciate them because what I enjoy about our team, and I just don't want us to lose that, is yeah. that uh, I see on our staff and I see in our volunteers, um, yeah. so many of them that they really do give heart and soul. Yeah. And I just want to keep that focus because uh, it's so easy to allow business of life. It's so easy to allow the things to kind of, you know, jade us. Uh, because we don't have results like we want or see things like we want. No, we, I, I want to allow everything that I do flow out of my heart and soul for God, my love for him. And then everything else will take care of. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then everything else will fall into place. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, you know, it was such a good reminder for us that week because you know, as we're in that week, there's so many little details. Um, and when you read Deuteronomy, there's like so many little minute things that, you know, the priests had to do, the Levites had to do. There's so many tiny little rules, right? Uh, things that guidelines that God had spelled out for them. And it's like God is reminding them, hey, you got to, even though there, it sounds like little technical things, you still got to do this with all your heart and soul. And it was like, uh, this that week just getting ready there were so many tiny little you know minute little one degree type things that uh everybody had to do but it was like hey if i don't do this with my heart and soul then what's even the point right i yeah. think when i think about the times of, in my life i'm like right now like i could say that i'm feeling tired but i i don't really feel tired i feel like i'm like on cloud nine right now coming out of easter but the two things that i think make people tired one is uh, when they're doing too much uh, because they feel like everything is on them. But I also think they also get tired when they're not doing enough. Uh, when they uh, are, whoa, what? what did I just do that? I think that was. 
How'd you pull that off? Apparently that brings out clouds or, or the uh, balloons. balloons. Yeah. But when, I'm, when you're I'm, not I'm doing enough. Balloons on my end. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Apple, for that. Yeah. Uh, but when you're not doing enough, uh, when you're not doing enough with your heart in it, uh, then even even little things become tedious and hard. And it's like when you're doing the little things that feel tedious, that could any yeah. at any other point in life feel tedious and hard. But when you're doing it with your heart and soul, uh, when you're giving all that you can give, it actually is tiring. It's filling. Like that's what I feel like. Right? I think that's what our team feels like. They feel satisfied. Like you just had a good meal, Agreed. right? Agreed. Like after a good meal, you kind of want to rest a little bit. That's what you're feeling right now. And so, uh, so I loved it. I love what you shared. You know, um, out of... Um, you know, a lot of our experiences recently, specifically o- over the years, it's been this way, but there's a lot of relig- original elements that, uh, mm-hmm. that are being produced. Yeah. Uh, talk to us a little bit about some of those things. Um, oh, Christmas, we had several original elements uh, mm-hmm. this year for Easter, several original elements. Give people a chance to understand you know, some of those, maybe even kind of name them and describe them so that yeah. they're like, oh, we wrote that yeah, uh, or individuals in our church. And then, of course, to, to do one thing, it's not just one person. It usually involves uh, a lot of people uh, to yeah. actually produce that content and then to actually deliver it uh, requires a ton of people. But talk, oh, talk a little bit about some of the original elements. Yeah. So. You know, I'll go back to like last Easter, we had this wonderful element with the song called Blown Away. Um, and it was like, you know, these kind of drawings and stuff with the lights and all of that. Uh, people might not realize it. That was uh, 10, 12 of volunteers in our church that came and drew, hand drew every frame that looked like a little animated cartoon. People drew that in our church and we pieced it together to make it a video. Uh, Things like that, it takes a huge team. Sometimes we have a great idea, but it takes a whole lot of people to make that idea be a thing, right? Um, this last year, we've had several songs that we've produced. Uh, and whenever you see those title slides where the names come up, there's a bunch of names behind each one of those songs um, because it's it's not just one, so one person might be like the initial starting point of a song. Um, but if you look at some of those songs, like there's actually one where you wrote a piece of a song. Um, and so it takes a lot of people jumping in to the idea and kind of making it on their own. And that, uh, you know, another one I was, I was trying to think of, um, um, gosh, what for Christmas, Christmas, uh, the animation, uh, that was produced, uh, behind Christmas, the story, the story that, yes. uh, a yes, book that and- that we had the little book or the little book, <laughs> it was a yeah. ginormous book. Yeah. Uh, and, and so we had this idea. We wanted to tell the, the Christmas story in a unique way. And so we had we decided to write a Christmas book uh, to tell it in the way that uh, we felt like would be best to share it to our church and our, our kids. And so we had a couple of staff members that sat down and they wrote the book. Um, and then they honestly, they wrote it as a story and we're like, this should be a book. And so we made it into a book. Um, like a giant book, like a storybook. Um, actually, we're working on this year, actually releasing it as a published book and making it available to our church. Um, but all of those animation pieces, uh, they started out as, you know, people are like, what if we, what if we had the angel doing this or whatever? And so we had an artist that's connected to our church uh, draw those out. So all of those elements were, none of that's just copy and paste from Google search. <laughs> you know, it, it was people in our church connected to our church uh, that are showing their, their creativity and their passions. And so, and that just spills out into everything that we, and I think that's what, that's the offering that God is desiring from us. And what's really cool is that we get to actually, you know, we have the churches, North churches that we're connected to, but we also have kind of a network of churches that we're connected to. We actually got to share those elements from last Easter, this Christmas, even this you know, all those lyric videos that we produce, all of those things we give, we give away to churches um, because not every church has the ability or the resources to be able to do what we get to do. Um, and so we we love sharing that too. Yeah. And, and you know, you, you talk about the book, it's coming to a store near you pretty quick. I don't know. 
<laughs> I, th I think we do have we do have a goal to have this out uh, probably by the fall, and yeah. so that uh, that's I'm not don't hold me to that, but uh, yeah. I think that we want to be able to have this available so that our church can have for their kids as Christmas yeah. gifts and to be able to be reading into the Christmas story with their families. It, and I think it's going to be really good. You know, yeah. even even for this Easter, we had the opening song uh, yeah. written by our own Michael Tartabono. Yeah. And, uh, it, really powerful. And then you go into uh, the spoken word part. Yeah. Uh, D. Gammon gave, uh, but it was written again by our team. And there yeah. were several people went into that to critique that. Uh, yeah. So it was just really, and then the elements related to that in regards to the um, drawings on the, you know, the reflected yeah. upon the scrim uh, for yeah. the, before the veil fell down. Uh, so good. Yeah. All, all the little, it was actually charcoal art that was the drawings that you saw with that, with the, the spoken word piece. So all of that was original creations uh, from people connected to our church that did those art pieces. Um, and so it, it's, I think it's one of the coolest things that you get to do. If you think about like the way that the church historically has been like the, the way that people expressed art um, in, and we get to be, uh, we get to participate a little in that. And so people who are artists and creatives, um, they get to express themselves um, in, as worship to God. Worship is not just singing. Uh, it's our full expression of adoration uh, to Jesus. And so they get to use our artwork to do that. And so those are people who do music and write songs and you know, create drawings and sketches and paintings and all of that get to be a part of that. And so, and people who are just creative at thinking and organizing, that's part of that too. Yeah. 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 You know, it, so many people, literally hundreds, I don't know how many volunteers, maybe you have a grasp on how many volunteers went into uh, yeah. this past weekend at our locations. But I mean, I would say comfortably maybe close to 600 yeah, plus volunteers. 600 plus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's just really, and I applaud all of them because we're talking, we're, we're specifically diving into uh, the production and, mm -hmm. and I, I celebrate that. And, and of course your journey here uh, has been, you, you're the, I think you're the only one that's on full-time staff now that um, uh, didn't come from within the church. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you were uh, one that we brought in just really to do video initially. And then we yeah. begin to see, oh my goodness, he has a lot to offer. Uh, yeah. And then you went from there to kids, to groups, to, you know, a lot of different roles in the church to the position. Yeah. And so, but let me just, when it comes to all the volunteers, we have tons with our next gen uh, this weekend. Um, our host team um, just really stepped up. Oh. Uh, parking, egg hunt, uh, yeah. all of those things were great. Could you just simply elaborate on that? Yeah. Uh, you know, the teams that went into putting together, you know, from parking people to greeting people, you know, they play such an important role because we know that people make the decision to to come to it, to stay at a church within like the first 90 seconds of walking into a church. And so that means a parking person is the first person that determines if someone's going to come back or not. Right. Uh, the, the host team, the, the people at cafe, they, the people at check in for kids, they help make a decision for people. And so they play a vital role. So we don't minimize their job. Um, and so our check in team kids ministry, um, you know, I always tell our check-in team, our goals, we want to be Chick-fil-A, not TSA. Everybody, everybody has to check in. All right. Everybody has to bring their kids in. Oh, but that's I good. Want, it's going to be busy, but I want it to feel like Chick-fil-A. I don't want it to feel like TSA. And so we want to, we want to create an atmosphere of just grace and, and kindness. Um, and they, they did that this weekend at such a high level. You got to imagine you, like pastor said, you said like three times as much people showed up to church. Our building didn't get any bigger. Uh, our parking lot didn't get any bigger. Our spaces didn't get any bigger. Like, we had to accommodate all of those people into eight experiences. And so they, they had to work really hard uh, to be able to be fun and flexible, 
bring people into, and that takes creativity too, uh, of how we're going to do this. And so uh, people in our church, they served like crazy. Um, We had uh, multiple people that said, Hey, I'm just going to stay and serve on all day Saturday because I want to, I want to give in that capacity. Uh, I met a, a, an older uh, uh, lady at our church who is retired. Uh, f- just one of those like most graceful people you'll ever meet. Uh, I remember I saw her all day Saturday. I was like, what are you doing? And she's like, oh, well, I, I wanted to help today. And so that was her goal was to help all day with Saturday. Um, the the folks that put together the egg hunt, we make no qualms. About it. We, the reason we do an egg hunt is because not because we like egg hunts. Okay. We love families. We love people getting to hear about Jesus. And so, uh, you know, the reason we did it was because we wanted to give our people an opportunity to invite somebody to church. And so we just had um, a ton of new people, I think 40 plus new families just at OKC that showed up just on Saturday and Thursday for the egg hunts um, that we get to build a relationship with and seeing them come to know Jesus. Um, We had kids get saved. Uh, in the elementary room, uh, there was a call to salvation. So we got to talk to those parents about salvation and water baptism uh, with their kids. I actually talked to a family. Um, they were Their son was getting ba- is going to get baptized this Sunday. Um, and the dad is excited because he's, he's actually saying he wants to get baptized. So he's going to get baptized and then he wants to turn around and baptize his son after. And we're like, we're, we're going to figure out a way to make that happen because uh, I think that's the coolest thing. Uh, and Absolutely. So, Entire families finding Jesus. That's what this is all about. And so those volunteers that gave, that's why, that's why they did what they did, uh, because stories like that. So, yeah. So, so good. So good. This is just a great, great time. Uh, you know, uh, t- tell us a little bit about, I know that we're going to wrap this thing up, but just want to talk to us about, you got baptism this coming up weekend. And yeah. uh, I really encourage people, if, if you've not been baptized, do so. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, what's stopping you? Yeah. What, what, what's stopping you? Is pride stopping you? Is, you know, um, the idea that, you know, when you were a kid, um, mom and dad baptized you, but really that was not your decision. Don't let it stop you that you have decided to follow Christ. So be baptized. And so that's this weekend. It's going to be a great time. It's always fun to rejoice. I encourage people to hang around and watch those baptisms and yep. celebrate with people that you're celebrating. There's nothing that brings life like new birth in a family. And that's new birth physically and new birth spiritually. And yep. we're the family of God. And so to celebrate uh, children being born, you know, of you know, natural birth uh, and then people being born of spiritual birth is what it's all about. Yep. Uh, growing the kingdom. Yeah. But then next weekend, we've got, after we've got water baptism this coming weekend, and then we've got another special weekend. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So we have, uh, after water baptism weekend, we have friends and family weekend. Um, and that is an opportunity for you to bring your friends and family to church. Um, and so this is really uh, a great way to say, hey, maybe if Easter was the first time you showed up to church, come back again, right? Uh, and we want to give you a reason to, to come back. We're going to make it fun. It's going to be like a... Uh, a fun party atmosphere. We're going to have, you know, food and games and inflatables and uh, a 360 camera uh, that people really love. Uh, And so there's going to be a lot of fun elements uh, to the service. Uh, And so I think the big thing though, is that, uh, man, if if you're like, sometimes I think people, when they walk into church after they missed it for a while, it's like when you walk into the gym, um, you know, after you haven't been in a while and you feel like everybody's looking at you, Pastor Rodney, you have no idea what this feels like. You're always at the gym. Okay. But for the, the rest of us humans, okay. We walk in the gym and it feels like everybody's like looking at me. Right. Uh, the truth is nobody's looking at you. Everybody's looking at themselves. I thought, that's why they got those mirrors at the gym. Okay. Everybody's just staring at themselves. And so show, if, if you feel like, you know, I missed it. I, don't worry about it. Just show back up. Nobody's looking at you, right? Everybody, if, if they see you, they're going to celebrate you. Um, and friends and family, that's all it is. We want to make sure you feel like you're a friend, you're family when you walk into this place. And so that's the goal. We want you to walk in and, uh, and hopefully bring somebody back with you. Um, for those of you watching, as you call Norchurch home, there's somebody you invited. Maybe they didn't come on Easter. Maybe this is another opportunity to say, hey, I know you didn't get to make it on for the egg hunt. Why don't you come for this thing, Right. Uh, and so that's all we want to give you is an opportunity to invite somebody to come back. 
So, Samson, talk to us just a little bit. We're starting a, uh, this coming weekend, we're starting a new collection of talks yeah. called Unlikely Heroes. Yeah. And we're actually going to be diving into um, uh, Joshua for the first couple of weeks as an unlikely hero. And um, then we're going to be going into, I think, Ruth, Esther, and uh, Samuel. Yeah. And so it's going to be really good over the next few weeks. T tell us about how we do our sermon uh, messages and prep for our collection of talks uh, yeah. as a church. Yeah, so we all of our sermons, for the most part, come from our our scripture reading. So all of our series or our, our collection of talks come out of um, our scripture reading plan. It's one of my favorite things uh, that we do because it it makes it valuable when you're reading through scripture and you have questions. And then on Sunday, Pastor Rodney, you're like opening that up and you're dealing with that. Uh, or like when you're talking about, you know, uh, the sacrifice and offerings and things like that from Deuteronomy. And I'm reading about that in my at my house. So that's part of the reason we do it that way. In fact, I have pastor friends. That uh, I just one recently I was talking to, and he was talking about how hard he has sometimes when he's doing like doing his quiet time because he's got his quiet time and he's got his, you know, prep for his sermons and stuff that he's doing, and you know I, I feel like you know whenever I'm doing sermon prep or I'm getting ready for a talk, like my quiet time feeds into it. Like some of the best sermons or the you know inspirations has come from my quiet time, uh, weeks or months before I ever have to preach. Um, sometimes it's, it's things that just in that week that like, and just as I'm reading and I'm studying on my own, uh, in my quiet time, my alone time with God, that it's like, that's what I want you to share. And it's, uh, it takes the work out of sometimes of having to like sit there and like, what am I going to talk about? And so, and I think it's, it's wonderful for our people because, uh, I have we have people in our small group, uh, whenever we talk to this, our small group talks through the message every single time we meet, um, and it's beautiful because all of our families are reading through the scripture plane. And so they're talking about what they, the podcast they listen to or like uh, different, you know, studies that they've done. And then, you know, they're talking about the sermon and it's like all just kind of lining up, just kind of like just zipper together. Um, and so uh, I'm really excited for Unlikely Heroes. Uh, Joshua is one of my favorites. Um, and uh, so Joshua is the first one we're covering for the first two weeks, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah, of this collection of talks. So yeah, and I got week one, and you got week two. So I'm looking forward to hearing you, and I'm looking forward to figuring out what I'm going to preach this weekend. So <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you got a good one. I think it's going to be good. Well, hey, um, I think we heard a little bell while ago that said we had two minutes left, so we're down to the last few seconds now. And I'm so glad that I had this conversation with you, uh, Pastor Sampson. Thank you for all that you do uh, to make a huge impact in North Church and beyond. Love and appreciate you and Hope, uh, your three amazing kids. I love all of you very much and glad you joined me today. Yeah, love you, Pastor. Thank you. And I'm so glad that you joined us for Up and to the Right and I'll look forward to seeing you next week. Hey, take time to share this with somebody and uh, let them know that, hey, this is something worth listening to. Have a great day. We'll see you next time on Up and to the Right.